Leading Education Towards Successful Teaching and Lasting Knowledge, or Let's Talk, is a podcast that discusses relevant topics and issues in education management and governance. Hosted by Dr. Evely Serrano, Dr. Monica Wallet, and Dr. Emily Dicolen, Let's Talk is an extension initiative of the Institute for Governance and Rural Development, College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Las Banas. Dr. Evely is an associate professor and the director of IGRDC Path. An education enthusiast and lifelong learner, she is passionate about improving the quality of teaching and learning through teacher training and education. An assistant professor at IGRDC Path, Dr. Monica has occupied academic and leadership positions in higher education institutions in the Philippines and Singapore. A registered psychologist, She is a well-known mental health advocate and speaker who designs and facilitates training programs aimed at promoting mental health and well-being. Dr. Emily is an associate professor and currently the college secretary of UP Manila's National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions. A dynamic administrator and education manager, she has introduced innovative programs and projects in various institutions of higher learning. Let's talk! Every Wednesday on the UPLB College of Public Affairs and Development Facebook page as we lead education towards successful teaching and lasting knowledge. Welcome to the second episode of Let's Talk. This is Emily and joining me are Dr. Evely and Dr. Monica. Kumusta na kayo mga ka-let's talkers? Baka naman gusto ninyong batiin ang ating mga followers and listeners sa ating podcast. And of course, para pasalamatan na rin silang lahat for listening to our first episode. Yes, hello mga ka-let's talkers. Thank you so much for joining us today. And special thanks to everyone who joined us in our pilot episode. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as we did. Just to share one of the comments by one of our listeners, what I like most about the professors in UPLB is that they really are adaptive to changes, especially in the new normal in education. Nakakataba naman ang puso ang comment na yon. Thank you. I so agree. Much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oo, nakakatawa. No? Kaya nga ako rin ano nagpapasalamat sa ating mga dear listeners. And new subscribers sa ating pilot episode at ngayon mga nakikinig ngayong araw na ito. And I'd just like to react to that comment. Ano? That's the reason why we keep on trying to improve ourselves and we really value your feedback and comments. That's the reason why also na ang aming style ay relax lang, conversational. We use our local vernacular. And, uy, aba, almost 500 views na tayo. Oo Actually, nga, ang galing. Hmm, ang galing, no? Pilot lang yan. <laughs> Correct. So, yes. Again, salamat. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. And we sincerely appreciate your support. Yes, salamat po sa pakikinig sa aming discussion about readiness for blended learning. And in this episode, we will be discussing another interesting topic, the perceived impact of remote learning. According to UNESCO, approximately 1.5 billion learners worldwide were affected by the school closures as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And in the Philippines, around 27 million learners were affected in basic education alone. And UNESCO said that education cannot wait because if learning stops, we will lose human capital. And this is the reason why schools had to reopen and introduce remote learning or remote teaching. Remote teaching and learning, as defined in the OVPAA memo 2020-66, cover the entire spectrum of asynchronous or non-real-time communication between teachers and learners, that is from text-based, meaning through email, messenger, Viber, or online discussion boards in different platforms such as Canvas, the VLE or the Virtual Learning Environment of UP, and of course, Google Classroom. 
And it also includes synchronous or real-time communication between teachers and learners, such as lectures, webinars, and teleconferences using Zoom, Google Hangouts, or Google Meets. Now, Dr. Evely and Dr. Monica, as teachers, could you tell us about your general observations No, of your students during remote teaching? Yes, uh, Dr. Emily, I can see that generally yung mga students naman natin ay, you know, they're exerting effort to uh, participate in class. In fact, I remember one student who has some internet connectivity problems. Talagang nalalog out siya sa Zoom, pero talagang she kept on joining. So, paulit-ulit. So, kita mo talaga yung dedication ng studyante na yun na maka-participate mm-hmm. sa klase. And I really appreciate that, no? Sa mga students natin, yung effort nila na, na mag-participate uh, despite, okay, some limitations in terms of connectivity. However, I've also noticed that some students tend to multitask while attending classes. So parang ano rin, may iba na parang distracted ba? <laughs> okay, so may ginagawa silang, may kailangan silang asikasuhin yung ibang mga bagay. And so they end up missing important information or details during the discussion. Alam mo, Dr. Evely, kasi yan, according to cognitive psychological research, well, contrary to the term multitasking, our minds are actually unitasking. Meron din tayong mga tinatag na limits kasi we focus on one stream of stimuli or information at a time. Oh. Kaya nga, uh, yung sinasabi nating Multitasking is alternatively called task switching. Task switching? Mm-hmm. What what does I know what does task switching exactly mean? Could you explain that further? Actually, ang sinasabi dito sa research, ang nagta-task switch ay nagde-direct ng attention from one stimulus to another and then back again. So in other words, there is what we call cognitive cost to task switching. Students would actually perform poorly in other tasks kapag pinipilit nilang pagsabayin ito. Kaya pala, nangyayari din sa akin yan. Parang guilty-guilty ako dyan sa task switching na yan. Pero sa tingin mo, Doc Evely, what can be done about it? Can you think of some suggestions of how to avoid yung tinatawag ni Doc Monica na task switching? Mm-hmm. So, I think for us mga teachers, so one thing that we can do is give engaging and collaborative activities. So, we need to provide opportunities for students to interact with one another and to feel that they are really part of the class or the learning situation. Same as when we were in face-to-face setup. Students should be active participants of the learning process. So for example, we can have breakout rooms wherein we can have mga small group discussions, diba? chance for the students also na to talk with one another. Mm-hmm. And also we can make use of interactive na mga <laughs> apps. Okay, so for example, Slido or Mentimeter. So para yung mga students, may input din sila sa discussion even if silent mode sila, di ba? And then we can also have online quizzes. Okay, um, students enjoy that, di ba? So yung ating the ever ano, reliable Kahoot. So parang ano siya, icebreaker din siya of sorts eh. Uh-huh. So um, yung mga ganun, I think, would be able to, through those things, di ba? We can engage yung ating mga uh, studyante. So even if yun nga, uh, remote tayo, yes. di ba? So it doesn't mean na imposible na maging, na maging participative, yeah. collaborative yung klase natin because there are really um, tools, apps, di ba? Now we can use, okay, to make learning engaging and fun for our students. Yeah, I agree with you, Dr. Evely. Ako din, nararanasan ko yan. I keep my students engaged in the discussion by, oh, para oh, oh, by giving some oh. activities para lang, di ba, sa principles of education, yung keep them on task. Mm-hmm. You know, Doc Monica yes. and Doc Evely, these are your general observations, no? But the, I've read this in a certain survey, no, that was conducted last year. The survey showed that People put more weight on the negative impact of remote learning Mm -hmm. over the positive impact. Now, have you seen some of these negative impacts from your students? 
Uh, I noticed naman, meron talaga mga negative impacts about this uh, remote learning to our students. One of these would be yung communicating with other classmates, especially in group activities or group projects. Kaya na naisip ko, no, is it possible that we give students the option to work individually? O I remember talaga naman the importance of uh, collaborative learning, pero if it's not really very helpful, And if it's really giving them more stress, what do you think? Siguro, it's something that we need to reflect on, siguro, as teachers. Yeah, so oh, kailangan din natin mag-adjust, eh, di ba? Based dun sa experiences natin sa klase with our students. Kasi, yun nga, paiba-iba yung mga studyante natin. So, what for one group may not necessarily oh. di ba, work for another So, mm-hmm. ayun, ako, I've noticed that as well sa aking mm-hmm. mga ano, eh, studyante. Kasi... Yun nga, there seems to be a problem related to communication. Yun nga, minsan may mga nagre-reklamo ng mga students no na hindi ganun ka-responsive <laughs> yung mga group mates nila. And then even in class, I noticed that eh, some of our students are not really as engaged or responsive. Tapos hindi pa required yung attendance. So there are students who would really not attend class, di ba? Kung nandun man sila, minsan hindi ganun ka-responsive. Tahimik lang, silent mode. Ayun. Mm-mm. Eh baka naman kasi Doc Evely, baka naman meron silang ibang ginagawa. Alam mo, nasa bahay sila. Most likely may mga errand silang kinokompleto. Uh, inutusan oh, dahil, ano yun, oh. no, dahil sa kanika nilang mga tahanan at sila probably ang inaasahan ng kanilang mga magulang kapatid no? o baka nagko-coach, nag-tutor sa mga kanilang ibang mga kapatid na nag-online learning din Nako, that happens talaga. So, um, even students admit, yun nga, sometimes they have to attend to their chores first or minsan nag-overlap, di ba? So, yun nga, may kailangan kang alaga ang kapatid, mm-hmm. di ba? Or, yun nga, kailangan mo na, ay, kailangan mo mag-prepare ng, ano, ng food for <laughs> yung mga ganong bagay. So, parang may blurring of boundaries, di ba? So, Others, uh, some students, okay, cannot separate home from school for one reason or the other. And so, yun nga, apektado talaga yung focus nila sa klase. That's true. No? Kasi ako din, naobserbahan ko sa mga estudyante ko, talagang patong-patong din kasi naman talaga yung responsibilities nila. Or sometimes, yung mga kakailanganin nila sa pag-aaral, hindi rin talaga kasi kumpleto. Eh. Like for example, no, how many gadgets do they have at home? Tapos ilan silang magkakapatid na nag-aaral all at the same time. So, these are all, you know, impacts na talaga ng remote learning. So, mm-hmm. though I agree with both of you, Doc Evely and Doc Monique, that there are negative impacts of remote learning to our students, I'm definitely sure that there are positive impacts as well. So, can you perhaps share with us? Now, if you have observed any from your students? Okay, so I think I can start, no? So, uh, yeah, well, being at uh-huh. home while attending class has disadvantages. especially when you don't have a dedicated space for learning. For others, remote learning has given them the chance to be in two places at the same time. So for adult learners, it provides them the opportunity to pursue graduate studies while attending to other responsibilities. Since there is increased flexibility in terms of the time and place of learning. One positive impact, therefore, is that classes can be more inclusive and the education has become accessible even to those who could not access it before due to certain circumstances or limitations. I believe, therefore, that to a certain degree, this can be empowering for the learner. Alam mo, totoo yan, ano? And uh, madalas kong naririnig sa mga estudyante ko, na nakaka-save sila ng time because of the flexibility in completing their assignments and classworks. And they appreciate yung asynchronous sessions since they have more leeway in completing this work or classwork assignments, project. And they can choose whatever location or wherever they want to work or study in general. So this individualized learning truly helped the students find more free time to look into their interests and allow them to conduct their learning at the time or at their own pace for them to really succeed in whatever programs or plans they have for their learning. Yeah, that's right, Doc Monique. Sa akin naman, ang nakita kong positive impact ng remote learning ay 
naging opportunity ito upang bigyan ng masigit na sabihin na nating kaukulang pansin ang mental and emotional needs ng ating mga estudyante. Kaya kung masusi nating susuriin, talaga namang may positive as well as of course negative impact of remote learning to our students. Kaya In today's episode, we focused on the perceived impact of remote learning to our students. So while we recognize this, kita natin ano, na ang laki ng role natin as teachers upang ma-maximize pa din ang kanilang learning even in a remote learning context. Kaya in our next episode, ang pag-uusapan naman natin ay ang mga perceived impact of remote learning to teachers sa atin. Hindi lang sa mga estudyante natin may impact ito, kundi sa atin ding mga guro. So, we would like to invite all the teachers listening to this podcast to share your experiences. Ano ang mga naging impact ng remote teaching and learning sa inyo? Huwag kayong mahiyang mag-share, either positive or negative, by writing them down below and we will gladly include them in our discussion next week. So, thank you. Until our next episode of Let's Talk! Let's talk.